Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is short subject number seven. Be sure and watch the earlier ones in this series, and there'll be many more, and I try to keep them short. And the topic on this one is oil light bearings, also called sintered bearings, and uh, we're going to talk about how they're made, what they are, and some of their uses. So let's begin. Let me start out by saying that these are what we call plain bearings or bushings or sleeve bearings as opposed to roller and ball bearings. There are no parts and the beauty of them is that they are pre-lubricated usually for life, not always. But the word oil light is a registered trademark and oil light bearings were developed and invented by Chrysler Motor Company in the early 30s and the initial that is, the primary purpose of the research was to find bearings for windshield wiper motors in the cars, but they were so successful that they soon started selling these to other companies, and I believe the word oil light is still owned by somebody, but more efficiently, these are impregnated bearings or pre-lubricated bearings, and notice that they come in, well, really hundreds of sizes, and I'll show you some pages in the McMaster car, but here are different lengths, different ODs, IDs. Some are flange bearings like this. And you can also get uh, washers, thrust washers, and a lot of other products probably made of sintered bronze. Just about every hardware store has a selection like this of the more popular sizes. They're relatively inexpensive, two or three dollars. The box stores, I think, have these now in drawers, but they're going to be prepackaged in little uh, envelopes so they can price them. You can't write on these because they are oily. So what is sintering? Sintering is a process of manufacturing parts, not always bearings, but it's powdered metallurgy. In this case, they would be taking powdered or flaked bronze and pressing it into a mold of the appropriate shape with great pressure. And they are then the correct size, no machining necessary, but they would be heated at a relatively high temperature to fuse them together and they're quite durable however they are crushable that is you could crush them in a vise or with a plier so they don't hold up to that kind of abuse at all I used to buy an awful lot that were marked bunting there's one that, that says bunting I, there was a whole catalog on these back when I was in my prime maybe there still is but not the prime now you can't see it here but this material is very porous and I'm going to show you in a microscope in a minute. Now that again is not going to show up but it's very similar to a sponge when you examine it at high resolution and the oil then is easy to get into the, uh, the centered part. I believe that they're putting it in under vacuum but it will absorb oil as well almost like a blotter. One hour ago, I laid this centered flange bearing on a piece of index card and look at the oil that was sucked out of it by the paper. Now, these can be re-oiled by soaking them in oil or you might have a motor or something that has an oiler, a gets oiler or a little oil hole. Now, if you've taken many things apart, such as motors, electric motors and so on, you have seen centered bearings, possibly didn't know what they were. Do not confuse oil light bearings with regular machined bearings. For instance, this one is machined out of solid stock, commercially available, and I'll show you that under the microscope but you can compare it here, but there's usually a little different color in the bronze, and if you examine it closely, you can always see that it was made in a mold. Now, these do not machine very well, so if it's a little bit undersized, you can ream it, but it has to be an extremely sharp reamer, or it tends to just smear the uh, particles and actually kind of close the, the uh, pores 
and that would prevent it from oiling. Now as these get hot they release the oil and then as the motor cools off the oil goes back into storage and it's, it's tremendous invention and development that's already a hundred almost a hundred years old 110 90 make that about 90 or 80 years old and here's yet another selection that I have in stock always saving for the right moment which never seems to come okay I sacrificed a bearing like this I just crushed it in the vise it took almost no effort at all but playing a flame on it you're going to see very quickly that the oil will start to burn out matter of fact they actually burn it's not the bronze burning it's the oil of course and after they cool off still way too hot to touch a fella could re-oil them and the oil would get absorbed back into the centered bearing okay what I'm going to do now is show you a few bearings with my little microscope I do not know how well this is going to show up but I've got a broken bearing here the other half of that broken bearing so I can show you where the break was and how porous it is and I'm going to also compare an oil light bearing with the plain bearing all on this little screen I've got this held there's a dime so you can get the, an idea of the size and I'm holding that in a little brown and sharp clamp and I will play the camera into the screen right here momentarily I think I'll turn out the house lights house lights please you are now looking at the screen of the microscope and this is a centered bearing that I have underneath there can you see how porous it is now in my other hand I'm going to slide it over here is the other bearing that was turned on a lathe commercially made that is it there can you see the machining marks on it looks real smooth until you magnify it of course you are now looking at the flange part of that bearing look at how porous it is and let me slide the machined bearing over also a flanged bearing and you can see the machining marks you are now looking at the broken edge of the bearing the one that I smashed and I'm going to add a little oil to it with this hypodermic needle here so get a load of this this is kind of neat look at the oil soaking in just like a sponge and spreading out so it has great lubricating qualities it's a wonderful product really amazing I hope you like these microscope pictures I've never done that before myself I am rather intrigued by it you are now looking at a page out of the McMaster car catalog actually there's four pages of these bearings and there's even a nice little description here if you want to look that up and read that out of your catalog but the sizes go on and on here different IDs different ODs different lengths like I said four pages all reasonably priced because they are molded not machined and are made probably in the matter of seconds well that concludes short subject number seven on oil light bearings hope you enjoyed it see you next time this is Mr. Pete your YouTube shop teacher